And welcome! And welcome to this ANSYS video course on designing microwave passive components using the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short. And in this video, we're going to discuss how to analyze a T-junction power divider using ANSYS HFSS in AEDT. Before we proceed, let us discuss what a power divider is. Power divider is commonly referred to as a power splitter because it's used to distribute the power of the signal input to two or more outputs. It can also be used to combine two or more inputs to a single output. It is a passive device because it doesn't require any additional source or excitation. Now, a power divider or combiner, it can be used with oscillators, it can be used in an antenna feedback network or arrays, radio measurements, and many other applications as well. Power dividers are available in many configurations. The T-junction power divider is one of the types. It has two microstrip arms with an impedance of 100 ohms. There is one input port and two output ports, and the signal flows from the input port to the output port. At the junction where the signal is split, the signal is divided into equal or some ratio depending on the application. For example, if you're feeding a uniform phased array, then you need an equal power division. If it's a non-uniform phased array, then you need an unequal split of the power. And there are many reference textbooks on electric magnetic theory or microwave components. And here's a textbook example from one of these references, a T-junction power divider example problem from the chapter, Power Dividers and Directional Couplers in the textbook, Microwave Engineering by David M. Posar. Now let's simulate the power divider with unequal power division using ANSYS HFSS inside of AEDT. If you're new to ANSYS HFSS, please watch our other course intro to ANSYS HFSS to learn more about the user interface, as well as geometry creation, assigning boundaries and excitations. So here is our model geometry. For this model, we use the default units, which is millimeters. And in the history tree window, all the objects of the simulation model are visible. The top and the bottom conductors are assigned to copper and the widths of the microstrip traces are designed for a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, 75 ohms, and 150 ohms at a frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. And based on the impedances, the power division would be about two to one between the branches or the output arms. FR4 epoxy is used as a substrate material and the airspace above the trace is also assigned. The microstrip line widths were designed using the transmission line model, the TRL wizard available inside of ANSYS circuit. We just showed how to use this TRL wizard in the branch line quadrature hybrid video, part of this course. Now the impedance of the microstrip line depends on the substrate material as well as its thickness. And to parameterize the substrate material property for the dielectric permittivity, we'll need to use a project variable. In the project manager window, go ahead and right mouse click on the project name and select project variable. In the properties dialog box, click on add. Another dialog box appears. In the name field, enter epsilon underscore r and in the value put 4.4, click OK. And you can see a project variable is created. And note that a dollar sign is prefixed to the project variable name. That's to differentiate a project variable from a local design variable. Click on OK to accept the changes and go to the history tree window. Under solids, right mouse click on FR4 epoxy for material and select properties. The material property dialog box appears. And as you can see, the relative permittivity of the FR4 epoxy is given as 4.4 and the manufacturing limits for FR4 relative permittivity can vary from say 3.3 to 4.8, it's pretty big. And this will affect your device output performance. And to see what this material variation can affect, let's use simulation, a parametric simulation at that. Go ahead and clone the existing FR4 epoxy material by clicking on clone material option. 
and that's the quickest way for you to create a new material. We can also add a custom material by clicking on add material option and then edit all the required material properties. In both cases, we will use the project variable created earlier to define the relative permittivity of this new material. For this video, let's create the new material by using the existing FR4 epoxy material. In that pop-up box, enter a new name, some name to distinguish it from the existing material, perhaps FR4 underscore two. Then in the relative permittivity cell, under the value, enter dollar sign, epsilon underscore R, and click OK. And you see a custom material with the given name is created. Click OK to assign this to the model. And in the project manager window, expand excitations category. Then you see one lump to port is assigned to each of the arms of the power divider. And they are labeled for easy identification. Double click on each of these ports to see their properties. Make sure that normalized impedance is not checked. Right mouse click on the excitation category and select edit sources. A new window pops up. And in this window, we can excite one of the ports by using the magnitude and our phase field. By default, the input port is excited with one volt of magnitude and zero phase. Keep all other defaults and clone the window. Expand the analysis category and double click on setup one to open the solution setup dialog box. The solution setup is defined with 3.6 gigahertz as the solution frequency. Expand the setup one and double click on sweep. Interpolating sweep type is selected. The frequency ranges from one to six gigahertz with 401 linear points. Go ahead, save the fields by checking the checkbox. Click OK to close the dialog box. The analysis is all set. So let's go ahead and validate the design before analysis. And after analysis is done, go ahead and view the results. In the project manager window, right mouse click on the results category, select create terminal solution, data report, rectangular plot. Under the category, select S parameters. In that drop down menu, go ahead next to that, select the quantity only self terms, select all as shown under function, select DB, select the new report, close. And here you see the reflection coefficients at all the ports. You can also add X markers to see the values at a particular frequency. And similarly, you can just also plot the S parameters from port two to one and from port three to one. You can also plot the characteristic impedance of all the ports. Once again, right mouse click on the results category, select create terminal solution, data report, rectangular plot, and under the category, select terminal port Z0. Select the self terms for the quantity and select all. Click on the new report and close. And notice all the port impedances are as defined. Let's look at the field plot. In the history tree window, select the top of the substrate. Right mouse click, select plot fields E, Maggie. Keep all the defaults in the next window and click on done. And here's the magnitude of the electric field on the surface of the FR4. Let's go ahead and enhance the color of the magnitude plot by using the log scale. Double click on the legend, select the scale tab, and choose log. And click close to close the dialog box. To animate the phase, right mouse click on the electric field plot, select animate and click OK. And here's the animation showing the E field splitting into the two arms at the junction. Go ahead, close the animation dialog box. Now let's visualize the field interaction during power coupling. Go ahead. Do this by editing the source. Using the edit source options, change the magnitudes on the ports as shown to combine the signals from port two and three. Click on done. And you can see how the fields for the ports two and three are summed up and driven out through port one. Thank you for watching this video on the T-junction setup. And in the next video, we'll see how to set up a parametric for the substrate property and also look at another configuration of the T-junction power divider with equal power division. Thank you for watching this video on the T-junction setup. For more information on our ANSYS electronic tools or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.